the Samoan way. Fa'a Samoa, the traditional Samoan way of life, has remained unaffected from the crush of Western culture. In fact, many islanders consider Samoa to be the cradle of Polynesia, which stretches from Hawaii to Fiji and Tonga. American Samoa, which lies halfway between Hawaii and Australia in the South Pacific, came under U.S. control in 1900. Tutuia, the largest of the five volcanic islands that make up the territory, contains the Pongo Pongo Harbor, home to the majority of the island's population. Industrialization and modernization, unfortunately, has brought some of the West's environmental problems to the island. Samoa Environmental Protection Agency, or ASEPA, is charged with preserving the territory's natural beauty. The islands itself, it's very hard to explain. It's one of the rare paradises you ever find in the South Pacific. A lot of the islands have been used for several hazardous material storage, dump sites, and been really developing a lot where there won't be an environment left, but our island itself, we try to preserve as much as we can. So that's what our job in ASCPA is, try to save our island. In August 1996, EPA Region 9 was requested to evaluate a large number of chlorine cylinders that had accumulated after being used for water treatment on the island. The initial investigation revealed that many of the cylinders were deteriorated and contained products. Because of their condition, the cylinders were deemed unsuitable for transport to the mainland for treatment. In January of 1997, a team from the mainland assembled on the island to remediate the 230 cylinders, which were staged outside the Office of Procurement near the Tutuia Airport. We must be of one mind in this undertaking. Chlorine, UN 1017, RQ. First thing we have to do is determine what condition the cylinder is in. Is it movable? Is it safe to move? Is it safe to work on? And we look at things like the depth of the rusting and we look at the condition of the valve. In some of the cases here we've had valve caps, the, the top of the cylinder there that has become rusted and, and not removable. So we have to go and cut those caps off so we can you know, evaluate the uh, valve on the cylinder itself. Once we're satisfied that the cylinder is structurally intact and stable, we then try to figure out if the valve is functional. Uh, to do that, we attach uh, different uh, apparatus, sampling manifold, and from there we're able to tell uh, if that valve is going to work or not. One thing with chlorine valves, they have a tendency to block, uh, unlike a cylinder of oxygen, for instance. Once we've determined uh, that it does have a functional valve, then we can do several things with it. Uh, we can either recontainerize that cylinder, in other words, take the chlorine that's in it, which is still very usable product, and place that into a new structurally sound uh, cylinder, where it can then be put out for later use. Another option for us, and uh, one that is used when there are usually smaller quantities of material, and that is uh, treatment, actually neutralizing the chlorine here on site chemically. And that entails injecting it in a controlled manner uh, into a liquid reactor uh, that is uh, filled with sodium hydroxide. It's a caustic agent. And what that results in is the formation of something we're all very familiar with. It's called table salt or sodium chloride. Any residual liquids remaining in the cylinder were then vacuumed through a gas scrubber, which also utilized sodium hydroxide to neutralize the remaining chlorine. Once that is all completed, and once, once the cylinders are empty, what we then do is we um, take the valves off of each cylinder, 
We run a rinsate solution through there several times in order to neutralize any residual uh, sludge or uh, chlorine that might be adhering to the walls of the cylinder. It's drained out of the uh, cylinder and neutralized. And the cylinder is then basically scrap metal. It can be used for not a whole lot of things here on the island. They use them for bells at uh, prayer time, but uh, most of the time they end up in the, in the scrap yard. Uatino le soi fua, uato itua apolima. A danger has been avoided. Safety at the site was paramount. The U.S. Coast Guard's Pacific Strike Team was on hand to head up site safety and contractor monitoring. The island's high humidity and temperatures in the 90s also made working in protective clothing difficult. Heat stress is a big concern on this site and we're watching everybody closely and we've taken baselines uh, in medical monitoring and we continue to medical monitor them daily. We're taking it easy, not overextending people and making sure they get a lot of fluids. The cylinders were being processed outside an occupied building in a residential and commercial area. As a precaution, an EMS team from the island was on site for the duration of the effort. The air team from REAC also provided real-time monitoring of the atmosphere in the unlikely event of a release. Wapi leulu. The end is in sight. 